have a lot of genes and mutations to occur, is that we have two copies of every gene, one from mom and one from dad, and so usually even a persistent mutation isn't going to cause a disease. Now, a lot of you are familiar with things like Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is an example of a disease that occurs in the Jewish population fairly often. But although there may be many carriers of this, as you hear the term, most people don't even know they have a, are a carrier and will never know their whole life because it will never affect them. And only if they marry and have an offspring from another carrier will there be a serious disease. That's because this is known as a recessive disease. Um, the gene we're talking about today, curiously enough, is going to be called a dominant gene because the truth is it only takes one of those copies to be altered for it to have the impact that we're going to talk about. So unlike the disease where it's recessive and you have to have inherited two copies that are altered, even inheriting a single altered copy in this situation leaves you with a, a mutation and, a, and the BRCA syndrome that we're talking about today. So here's basically, I'm going to show this slide again in a second because it means something in both settings. But if this is a parent, say this is the father and this is the mother, basically here's the two copies that are normal and here's one copy that's abnormal, one copy that's normal. Anytime an offspring ends up with the abnormal copy, they'll have the effect that we're going to be talking about. But if they end up with two normal copies, then they won't. We're going to go back to that in a second. So here's what you need to know. Only about 10% of all breast cancers are hereditary, and about 13% of all ovarian cancers are hereditary. So the, most breast cancers occur for random reasons, and most of us in this room have to pay attention to whatever that random reason be. There are hormonal reasons, there are biological reasons in our environment, and then there are just natural reasons that occur. But about 10% are inherited. There's a difference, there's two types of inheritance we're going to talk about, but the BRCA1 and 2 genes, um, and let me just clarify since these two numbers come up, think of these volumes for me for a second. It turns out that chromosome 13, which would be one volume, and chromosome 17, which would be another volume, both carry similar information, and a mutation in either one of those of the appropriate chapters can cause the same syndrome. So we talk about BRCA1 and BRCA2, they're really practically the same in terms of their impact, and we always are testing and looking for both at the same time. The other thing to realize that even though this is only 10% of the population in general that get breast cancer, there are management options for these individuals, and we're going to talk a lot about why that's, what's the purpose of knowing all this. So this is just another way to draw out that same thing. If this is all breast cancers, only about 10% of them would be inherited. But of the ones that are inherited, most are BRCA1 and BRCA2, and there are a few other genes that we don't know about uh, yet. Basically, the biggest impact here is in breast cancer. When you are a carrier of a BRCA gene, a woman has up to an 87% chance of developing breast cancer during the course of her lifetime, and even up to a 50% chance by the age of 50, which if you compare it to the normal, which is 2%, basically, here it is, up to, by age 50, you have a 2% chance of developing breast cancer, but, a, but with the gene, it's up to 15%. If you have no gene mutation in your lifetime, you're seven, by 70 you have a 7% chance that goes up to 80% chance. Nobody can miss that this is a profound impact on a person's risk of breast cancer. But the other area, and maybe the most important area, is here, which is that there is also up to a 44% chance of developing ovarian cancer in a, in a 